This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today on the number one professional wrestling podcast right here on YouTube.com. I got to make it all professional sounding, man. I got to make it all professional sounding, bro, because YouTube likes to give JD the middle finger, bro. Yesterday's off the script was unmonetized. It was deemed non advertiser friendly and I don't know why I, I really don't know why bro and I am quite angry because I sat here for almost two hours recording for you guys and I got zero dimes out of it but at least Enzo Amore is on a new t-shirt right so uh, hopefully today goes a little bit better and off the script hit your sub boxes and you see nice little yellow bars at the bottom of your screen but this is off the script. This is episode 188, part number two for you Saturday, September 23rd, 2017. No Mercy review is coming Sunday night. On Friday, we did the preview and predictions for No Mercy. So if you guys missed that, link will be within the annotation in this video. We go in depth over everything, man. I do it better than anybody. So if you guys want No Mercy preview predictions, we uh, have a nice little message for all those doubters out there as well. In the opening of the podcast, spitting some truth, spitting some reality to everybody. Very, very good episode yesterday, man. Fire episode of Off the Script, like it is every single weekend. Uh, that is in the annotation you guys see within this video. Go and check it out and leave a thumbs up. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you guys are listening on iTunes, I don't mention this often because YouTube is my main priority. But if you guys are listening on iTunes, man, I would love if you guys just leave me a five-star rating on there. Leave me a comment. Call me a goon. I, I don't know. Something on there, man. Uh, if you guys enjoy the show, show some support on iTunes as well. Uh, so thank you guys so much for listening wherever you are listening. On Friday's show, we had an unboxing as well, man. We did a That Wrestling Club unboxing. ThatWrestlingClub.com. Use coupon code JD from NY to save yourself 10% off your first subscription. I want to thank everybody over at That Wrestling Club. They are very, very, very good friends of the show. Uh, awesome sponsors of the show, and I want to thank them for hooking JD up with an unboxing, as always. But today we got another unboxing, man. We're gonna do, we're gonna do instead of that that wrestling club which we did yesterday. We're gonna do pro wrestling crate. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna save you guys some money on this one as well. I, I know there's a portion of my audience that loves these unboxings, so today we got pro wrestling crate from pro wrestling tees because you know JD is sponsored by pro wrestling tees. I got this T-shirt off barbershop window, man. This Daniel Bryan Yeselmania t-shirt or Yesmania t-shirt, barbershopwindow.com. So, uh, Pro Wrestling Crate is my favorite unboxing. I don't know what the theme is this month. I really don't care. I just love being surprised when I see that crate sitting on my doorstep, man. So, we'll go over that today uh, in just a little bit. Uh, I want to shout out WrestleRumble.com. I didn't even know they were having to pick them this weekend for No Mercy. You know, they're getting right back into the swing of things, man. We've seen one for SummerSlam, No Mercy. They got one for Hell in a Cell. It's going to be good times, man. If you guys want to win some money, if you guys want to watch No Mercy and win some money, cold hard cash, all you got to do is go to WrestleRumble.com. Now, listen to this. I ain't no mathematician, bro. I ain't no mathematician. But uh, I I'll tell you what is a good deal, okay? One entry, if you guys want to enter one time, it's $10. If you guys want to enter three times and give yourself three times the amount to win money, you can spend $20 and get three entries into Wrestle Rumble and No Mercy's Peckham. But if you want to enter five times, five times, listen to this deal. You can buy five entries for $30, man. That's a, that's a deal. Like I said, I, I'm a goon when it comes to math. But I know which one I'm going with, man. WrestleRumble.com, No Mercy, pick them. It's a questionnaire. The, the one goon with the most points at the end of No Mercy, with whatever they ask you, is going to win. Listen to this. First place, $500 cold hard cash. And you're going to get a mystery crate from my friends over at WrestleCrate.com. Second place is $100 with three illustrations of your choice from ExtraCoolerArt.com. I don't know what they are. I never heard of them before, but Matt... I know he's got the hookup, man, so you know it's going to be awesome. Third place is $100. Fourth place, $50. Fifth place, $50. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth place. You're going to get a free entry 
into the WWE Hell in a Cell Pick'em. And my God, I hope that is the day. The modern day, Phil Uraha loses the WWE title because he sucks. He's awful. He's dreadful. He is the worst WWE champion in modern history, bro. So there you go. Hell in a Cell Pick'em. You guys are going to get free entry into that if you placed anywhere between 6th and 10th. But that first place, $500 cash and a mystery crate from WrestleCrate.com. That's WrestleRumble.com. Do it. Why? Because JD and Off The Script said so, man. And if you guys are going to tweet, please tweet out Russell Rumble and tell them where you heard it. Right here on Off The Script. I want to thank everybody for the beautiful words about my Walking Dead playthrough for episode number one. You guys came out in full force, man. That, that, that thing's almost got a thousand likes on it. So you guys are coming out and showing support, and I hope it continues. Because normally when I do episode one of anything, it gets great rave reviews. After that, nobody wants to watch it anymore. I don't know if it's YouTube just killing it off or if you guys just found me boring in episode one. I don't know. But I think I'm going to be live streaming episode number two, man. Uh, it was demonetized right away because of the blood, the violence, the zombies. But then YouTube monetized it. So, uh, I, I don't know what's going on with that, but I, I'm going to try different things out, man. I think I'm going to live stream it. We're going to do episode two in, in in full, live stream on YouTube, either Sunday afternoon before No Mercy, or definitely on Monday, if not Sunday, because I might want to rest up, because I have a long live stream ahead of me. I will be live streaming with my brother during No Mercy, man, so look forward to that on Twitch, twitch.tv slash JD from New York, but I want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting my Walking Dead Telltale Games episode number one walkthrough, uh, if you guys missed that, that will be linked with yesterday's Off the Script in the annotation that you guys see in this video. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it, man, follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206, if you guys want to support, patreon.com slash JD from NY206, early access to Off the Script, Mario Kart 8 gameplay, which is absolutely biblical, it is the funniest thing that I do, man, all week long, Mario Kart Rage, who doesn't love Mario Kart and who doesn't love Rage, man, so if you guys want those things combined into one, you can't miss out on my Mario Kart 8 Deluxe gameplay for $5 or more a month. And I got to get on board with doing off-the-script retro, man. I've been lazy with my off-the-script retro. I know. I got to get that uh, out sometime very, 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 very soon. Uh, so look forward to that as well. But uh, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. And if you guys are not subscribed down below, please do so. Hit that subscribe button. This is Off The Script, the number one wrestling podcast on YouTube.com. And hit that bell for all notifications. Turn that thing on so you guys never miss an upload. We are almost at 83,000 subscribers, which will make us 17,000 away from the elusive 100,000 subscribers. Let's get into this unboxing, man. I can't wait to unbox this thing. It's sitting right in front of me. Pro Wrestling Crate. ProWrestlingCrate.com. All you guys got to do is go to the website. Enter the coupon code off the script, and everybody listening is going to get 20% off your first subscription. You can't beat that, bro. You can't beat that at all. So, prowrestlingcrate.com, and then use the coupon code off the script at checkout to save 20% off your first subscription. Let's do this, man. Let's do this. Let's do this. I don't know what the theme is, but we got. Professions, that is the theme, professions, there you go, the cheat, sheet, the cheat sheet is on the back, I don't want to look at it, because then I'd be uh, pretty much screwing myself over. Next month's theme, they already give you a hint into next month's theme, best of the indies, part two. What do we got here, man, what do we got here, ooh, I see some things I like in here, ready man, what do we got here, t-shirt number one. Ooh, I'll be pimping hoes nationwide, bro. Pimping ain't easy. The Godfather, look at that. On the ho train. Yeah, look at him. That's a nice t-shirt, man. That is a nice t-shirt. Uh, it's actually got all of his gimmicks on there, man. You see Papa Shango. You see Kama. And you see the Godfather right there. It's a nice t-shirt, man. ProWrestlingTees.com. ProWrestlingTees.com. This is ProWrestlingCrate.com. Make sure you guys remember that. Oh, my God. This one I'll be wearing around the house. I ain't wearing this goon outside. I'll tell you that. 
Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And it's not even a, it's not even him. It's not even him. It's one of those action figures from back in the day. Look. Who wants to wear Brutus Beefcake on their t-shirt? Are you kidding me? I do need a haircut, though. Maybe I'll give him a call. What do we got here, man? Oh, my God. Remember this guy, man? The Repo Man. Yeah. Look at that. 1991 Motor City Repo Man. There you go, man. Repo Man. One of those uh, cheesy gimmicks from back in the WWE. You know? What's mine is mine. What's yours is his. You know? Whatever. Um, what do we got here? Towel. I use this to wash my face in the morning. Tugboat. Toot toot. Look at him. Tugboat. Uh, what do we got here? Is this signed by Virgil? Certified by Pro Wrestling Tees. 100% 100% authentic. Look at this. A million dollars signed by Virgil. Look at that. Virgil doing good for himself, huh? I love you. Yeah, look at that. Brother Love pin. What do we got here, man? Old School. Steve Carino presents Old School, the Dusty Roads discussion. And by the way, speaking of Roads, I just listened to Talk is Jericho with Cody Rhodes. Excellent, excellent listen. I urge you all, all you guys to go listen. Um, they talk about why he left WWE, uh, what he wanted to do, uh, what he pitched to both Vince and Triple H and what they didn't want him to do, uh, how he feels about being the Ring of Honor World Champion, where he is going to go, is he going to come back to the WWE, what his favorite matches were uh, in WWE, in the Indies, um, how he's making a name for himself in the Indies, how he's growing up. It's just a great listen, man. Absolutely awesome podcast. I listened to it today. Um, uh, just by doing stuff around the house, and it, it flew by, man. An hour and a half flew by like that. I urge you guys to go listen to that. Uh, Talk is Jericho with Cody Rhodes. This is the best micro brawlers so far, man. And uh, seemingly in every single box, I got a whole ton of them here, man. I got I got the Young Bucks. I got Vader. I got Goldust. I got Taz. Right. I got um, who else I got up there? I got Marty Skrull. Look at this, man. This is the best one yet. Kenny Omega. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, man. I love collecting these things, and that's awesome. Look how detailed that is, man. This is why I love Pro Wrestling Crate every single month. What do we got in here? This is wrapped up in uh, bubble wrap, so it's got to be uh, fragile. This looks to be a race car. It might be Bob Holly. In fact, it, it does look like Bob Holly's race car, man. Look at this. Bob Holly's race car. Look at that, bro. Yeah. I love this shit, man. It don't even move. The wheels don't even move. It's just stationary. Uh, when I get a new place and I move out of this dump, all this stuff is going on display very nicely in my man cave slash game room slash podcast recording room. Um, And the signature of each crate is a autographed photo. Now, with the biggest crate, I think you get two. This is just one. <sighs> really? Really? This is the picture. There you go. I'll see you guys later, man. That's off the script. We'll get right into the news, man. Now, look at this. This is authentic. Authentic. Do I want to show you? I don't know, man. Do I want to show you? Come on, bro. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Who wants this goon? Look. Look at this goon, man. One of the most ridiculous gimmicks in all of WWE, and it's bent in the corner. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Now, but I like it, man. It's a cool picture. Brutus Beefcake, 100% authentic, uh, as, uh, is, as is everything with Pro Wrestling Crate and that wrestling club. All of their autographs are authentic, and that is... Pro Wrestling Crate for the month of September, man. So there you go. Professions was this month's theme. Next month, the best of the indies. Part number two. But we got some cool stuff here, man. I'm going to clean up. 
uh, I am going to clean up, and I will let Matt Hardy lead us on into the news and rumors of today's video. So if you guys want to be broken, listen to this word by Matt Hardy, and I'll see you guys on the flip side with the top story today. WWE under fire for the shitty promo that was Jinder Mahal on SmackDown Live. Matt Hardy right here. On off the Ladies and gentlemen, I have broken that heart. This is JD from New York. Actually, delete to JD from New York. I have cleaned this vessel. Make sure to check out his wondery show off the script. It's absolutely delightful. Wow. Now, you guys know how I feel about Jinder Mahal, man. I, I think Jinder Mahal at the top of SmackDown Live is A, not only ruining the show completely, but B has made the WWE Championship look worse than I think I have ever seen it, man. Especially in the last decade. I don't think there's been anybody worse than Jinder Mahal holding that WWE Championship. Jinder Mahal is a joke to the championship. Jinder Mahal, showcased at the top of the card for WWE on any brand, is just a ridiculous notion. And I don't think Jinder Mahal is deserving of a WWE Championship. Now, if I could find it, I, I want to read to you... Because I'm looking at a story about Rob Van Dam. We'll get into that as well. Apparently, Rob Van Dam wants to uh, make another WWE comeback, or he at least he has another run in him. But we'll talk about that uh, on today's show as well. But there was a story, if I could find it. I don't know why I didn't take this down. I don't know why I didn't talk about this on SmackDown Live, to be perfectly honest with you. It was about John Cena's father. And he went off on Jinder Mahal saying that he doesn't think Jinder Mahal is deserving of the WWE Championship. And if I could find it, I, I, yeah, here we go. John Cena's dad rips Jinder Mahal as WWE Champion. Now, if John Cena's dad is saying this about Jinder Mahal, then you know there is something really off about what WWE is doing on SmackDown Live. John Cena Sr., listen to this, was recently interviewed by Boston Wrestling Sports. Other than being the father of John Cena, he is the owner of the Millennium Wrestling Federation. He has also appeared on WWE television numerous times. It turns out that Cena Sr. is not a big fan of Jinder Mahal holding the WWE Championship. Here is some of what he said during the interview with Boston Wrestling Sports. And I quote, I don't think he's a good champion. I don't think he's a worthy champion. I think they need to get somebody in there that can get people involved in the championship matches. I don't think he's the man for the job. He also says that fans are going to get tired of Jinder since he can't wrestle. Cena's dad said it. I've been saying it. So if Cena's dad sees it, there's something wrong. So, he goes on to say about Jinder can't wrestling, and I quote, The fans are going to get pretty tired pretty fast. They don't like Mahal to start with, and not because he's a good heel. It's because he can't wrestle. On if his title reign resembles that of JBL's, Cena's dad disagreed. And I quote, He's not even close to being a JBL. Mahal is in there for one reason. They want the Indian market. What better way to get it than have the champion into the country you're going? And he's going to hold that when he comes out of India. He's going to hold that for a while, for whatever reason. To upset the fans? Maybe. Perhaps. But he certainly is not the same caliber of superstar like JBL. He doesn't have the arrogance, the ability, nor the characterization, nor the wrestling ability. Can you blame John Cena Sr.? Absolutely not. I've been saying it for months now. I've been saying it for months. Jinder, okay, for whatever reason... WWE wants him as the WWE Champion. I think it's ruining SmackDown Live. Uh, and, and, and this is true. It starts at the top of the card. When you got a top-tier talent on SmackDown Live. Now, ratings aside, because nobody on the roster is going to move the needle as far as ratings go. But the ratings, the one thing that you'll see is the ratings dip lower and lower and lower. They'll get back to being about where WWE is typically with the ratings. They won't go past that. There's nobody on the active roster right now that's going to move the needle past what WWE is usually accustomed to getting. But they'll always go down. And when they go down, you know WWE is doing something wrong and the fans don't care about a certain something on their shows. This certain something is Jinder Mahal because SmackDown's ratings are abysmal right now. 
Viewership is lost. Attendance is down. Nobody cares about Jinder Mahal. And don't give me the nonsense of Jinder's playing a good heel. Oh, but JD! Jinder is playing a good heel, man. What good heel? What good heel? Does a good heel need to result in promos having racist tones? You know? In a market, in a world where everybody's walking around on eggshells. You go the cheap route in getting that desperation pop. That's what I call it. What Ginger did on SmackDown, now, I don't know who to believe. There was a report saying that Ginger said that he helped script his own promos. He's got creative control over some of, the, some of his character, obviously with the help and guidance of Vince McMahon. So I don't know if he had some legit say in what was going to be said on Tuesday, or if this was really written by Vince McMahon or a WWE writer. I don't know. But whatever the case is, it came off as desperation. If he was such a good heel, if he was such a good heel, everything that he's done so far would be resonating with the audience. It's not. You know a good heel when you see one. When Jinder cheats to win, people are legit sick of it. Because A, it's the same ending every pay-per-view, and B, they don't find him to be legit to begin with. So they'll never look at Jinder as being able to win a match on his own. You know, heels don't necessarily need to cheat to win every single time. I understand you got to use sly, dirty tactics to get ahead of the baby faces, but every single time, every single title offense, every single show, every single pay-per-view, you know, where's the creativity in that? There is none. There is none. If Jinder Mahal was legit and you wanted me to see him as a legit guy, why don't you have him win matches clean? You know, it's not out of the realm of possibility that a heel wins a match clean. There are such things as heels who are good enough to just come across as champions. You don't need the Singh brothers or what I say, the cringe brothers, to do your dirty work with the same scripted ending every single pay-per-view. Jinder Mahal, no matter how good of a guy he is, because that's all I heard during SummerSlam weekend when he was interviewed. Oh, he's a stand-up guy. He's a good guy. He's genuine. This and that. Fine. He may be all those things. But when he's in the ring, he is dreadful. Garbage. And it needs to change. It needs to change, and his status in WWE needs to change. If AJ Styles and Jinder Mahal flipped roles, I wouldn't be complaining as much. Because you got him coming out saying that the American people are disrespecting him. The American people have turned their back on Jinder Mahal because of his race, his color, his family lineage, whatever the case may be. Now, I would actually want to see Jinder say those types of things, but while holding the United States Championship. See, that goes hand in hand. Jinder is a WWE Champion. I didn't see it then. After five months of experimentation, I don't see it now. So, I think it's time to end this experiment. I think it's time for Jinder Mahal to go back into the lab and, and get the reverse T-virus. Uh, he needs to go away. Seriously. But if Jinder Mahal was the United States Champion and AJ Styles was the WWE Champion, I think we'd be uh, singing a different tune on Tuesday nights. Ratings would be uh, where they should be. Nobody would be complaining as much. Jinder would be in the role that he should be in, in the mid-card. He is not a main event talent. He will never be a main event talent. And no, he is not a good heel. Clowns. He is not a good heel. A good heel doesn't need to use racist tones in their promos against a Japanese superstar the likes of Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, I am not offended by what was said. People think that I'm offended. People think I'm against what was said on Tuesday night because I'm offended in some way. I'm not offended by what Jinder Mahal said. I don't give a shit. I, I don't care. I don't care. I didn't laugh, but that's not my issue with it. That's not my issue with the promo on Tuesday night. Apparently, uh, the Washington Post had an issue with Jinder Mahal. The promo on Tuesday night got unwanted media attention. WWE had, had to issue a statement because the Washington Post made an article on Jinder Mahal's promo from SmackDown Live that has been published, and it's not the kind of media that WWE is looking for. The promo, which was meant to put more heat on Mahal for his upcoming Hell in a Cell pay-per-view match with Shinsuke Nakamura, was derided by many fans on social media as racist. 
So these people need to zip up and shut their mouths because, you know, people nowadays, you say one little thing and people get so triggered. They get so salty. Nobody can voice an opinion anymore. You got to be uh, reserved in everything you do. Screw that. Screw it. I'm not reserved here. I got to cut back on the cursing because YouTube's going to flag the video. But my direction and my tone and my attitude is always going to be the same. But racist? Was I offended by it? Of course not. I found a much more important issue to dissect from the promo and from the build that is Nakamura and Mahal going towards Hell in a Cell. The Post article included quotes from Mahal's promo, including, You always rook the same, and they call you Mr. Miyagi. The article also noted that fans could be heard shouting, That's racist, before a That's Too Far chant broke out. 15-year-old Now Man Faiz told the Post, WWE should have never approved this. A 15-year-old. A 15-year-old told The Post that WWE should have never approved this. And added that racism is an idiotic way to get heat and it makes the writers look bad. I gotta agree, agree with Mr. Faiz over here, 15 years old. Apparently he's got more brands than the writers on SmackDown Live. The Post also included quotes from fans that weren't offended by the promo. 33-year-old fan Fernando Padilla told the Post, I'm a longtime wrestling fan, and I just saw it as a show. And he just took the chance as fans doing routine heckling of a heel, and that the diverse crowd around him didn't seem uncomfortable because that's the kind of thing you expect from the WWE. Uh, Mr. Padilla sounds like one of those guys that's going to bend over and take it up the ass from WWE. They could do no wrong. Again, another goon who doesn't find the real issue with this situation. Now, Dave Meltzer chimed in. He was quoted in the story and said that wrestling has always been in its own little world, but nowadays everyone watches it. Really, Dave? That's why SmackDown Live is 40% filled to capacity, right? And then Road Dog wants to use uh, excuses on Twitter about, oh, how September is always a, a, a brutal month for WWE. Who cares? Who cares? I could say easily, as I look you in the face, well, if you were booking good television, maybe that 40% would be 75%. And people wouldn't be taking pictures from within the arena, just blurting it out on social media. Look how empty SmackDown Live is. House of Glory shows draw more people than SmackDown Live. What does that say? When we're at the NYC arena, we draw more people than WWE does for SmackDown Live. It's God honest truth. God honest truth, man. But uh, Dave Meltzer says that wrestling in, is, is in its own little world and nowadays everyone watches it and you can't get away with the same old tricks that many worked years ago because the fans will put heat on the company and not on the heel when they see something that they deem offensive. The Post also reached out to WWE and they offered this statement. WWE said, and I quote, Just like many other TV shows or movies, WWE creates programming with fictional personalities that cover the real world issues and sensitive subjects. They added, as a producer of such TV shows, WWE Corporate is committed to embracing and celebrating individuals from all backgrounds as demonstrated by the diversity of our employees, performers, and fans worldwide. End quote. Now, I understand that WWE is trying to get heat on Jinder Mahal, but if he was a good heel, you wouldn't have to resort to racism. That's where I'm coming from. So, the only thing I can hope for here is the fact that Nakamura hasn't gotten a chance to rebut against Jinder Mahal, and that WWE is planning on Nakamura taking the title of Jinder Mahal because this experiment has been deemed a grade A failure. Now, WWE, as a side note, didn't even upload the segment on their YouTube page. I had to find it on YouTube somewhere. Someone uploaded it. So when I did my SmackDown Live review, I like incorporating the live segments into the show. You guys seem to like that as well. WWE is where I usually go for it because they upload it to their YouTube channel. They did not post a Mahal promo, and it was not uploaded, so clearly there were people in the WWE that, as soon as it happened, felt the promo went way too far. The promo also cannot be found on their social media accounts like Instagram, Facebook, and the Twitter. What I have to say about this is, A... Uh, the Washington Post should stay clear of WWE. It's none of your business, okay? 
This is probably written by some goon who doesn't know anything about the WWE, who's looking for a story. Oh, look at look at Vince McMahon again, up to his old tricks. A corporately traded com- company, a publicly traded company on Wall Street, resulting to racism blatantly on their television show. People will eat that up. In today's world, where everybody wants to fucking get triggered on something and get salty over something, leave it to the Washington Post and a female to write this story and, and just blow it completely out of context. That is not the issue here, okay? Now, if this was in the Attitude Era, nobody would be saying anything, but this is not the Attitude Era. This is not Vince Russo, bro, writing for Jinder Mahal, bro. You know, this is not the Attitude Era. My issue with this is Jinder Mahal. They put this bum in a position as a top heel on SmackDown Live. He is not the top heel on SmackDown Live. He is not over as a heel. He's not even playing the heel role correctly. This is a failure. If he was such a good heel, WWE wouldn't have given him this script to go out there and say this in front of a live audience to another superstar from a Japanese background. They would have not have scripted this promo to come off this way. If he was such a good heel, you need to add racism You need to add racism and discrimination of another background, of another ethnicity into your promo to sell a title feud. You need to add this bullshit to a title feud that includes Shinsuke Nakamura. If this was AJ Styles, how would you be booking this feud between AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura? That's what I pose the question. To everybody watching me. Jinder Mahal and his character is so garbage that WWE knows this guy's a failure. But for whatever reason, the only reason why he's there is because he looks like a laboratory experiment. That's the only reason why he's in the position that he's in right now. How are you going to book Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles? You're going to have AJ Styles result and calling Nakamura names. Ew, ew, Japanese goon. You know? You're going to have that? You're going to have AJ Styles come at Nakamura's background? You're going to have AJ Styles come out and make fun of Nakamura's funny faces that he does in the ring where he's overly charismatic before he kicks your teeth down your throat? You're going to have AJ Styles do that? I'm just posing the question because this is what I hope the WWE Championship is going towards. After this failure is been just jobbed out at Hell in a Cell and taken the WWE Championship away from him. How are you going to book AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura? Now, if Jinder Mahal was such a good heel, right? Why couldn't you have Jinder Mahal just go against Shinsuke Nakamura and just have it be over who the better wrestler is? You know, the fact that the WWE Championship is embroiled in this nonsense, it's making it look even worse. This is what you're building your WWE Championship feud towards Hell in a Cell on. Funny faces and racism and Mr. Miyagi and ooh, you rook your shame. You know? That's what your WWE Championship is being built on. So when you do the video package for Hell in a Cell, right? We got to see clips of Jinder Mahal calling Shinsuke Nakamura Mr. Miyagi. I'm just leveling with you guys. That's what we got to hear. None of these guys have been in the ring together outside of one Kinshasa that Nakamura delivered to Jinder Mahal, right? All I see is the Cringe Brothers laughing, and I see Jinder Mahal laughing, calling him Pikachu and uh, a Michael Jackson ripoff. This is what Jinder Mahal has resulted to. Or resorted to, I should say. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. But I pose the question. If this was anybody but Jinder Mahal, how would you be building a title match towards Shinsuke Nakamura? It's simple. It wouldn't be what you've seen on Tuesday night. And if this is any indication about how they're booking Shinsuke Nakamura, then I don't even know why you brought him up to the main roster. If you're Shinsuke Nakamura and you got to listen to this, and you got to be given a script about what Jinder Mahal is going to be saying about you heading towards a WWE Championship match at a pay-per-view for SmackDown Live. If you're looking at this and you're thinking about how this title feud is shaping up, 
What are you thinking? I left New Japan for this. They promoted me from NXT for this. I could have stayed down there. I fought Balors and Joes and Zanes in NXT. I could have stayed down there and went against the Coles and the Aleister Blacks of the worlds, right? But they moved him up to be to be embarrassed in a match, in a feud with Jinder Mahal. It's disgusting. It is disgusting. If I was Shinsuke Nakamura, I would be utterly embarrassed to be employed by this company. This is disgraceful. WWE's only way out here is for Jinder Mahal to lose the title at Hell in a Cell, give it to Shinsuke Nakamura, have him hold it till WrestleMania, bring some prestige and some light to the WWE Championship, have AJ Styles win the Royal Rumble, and give us a championship match that is worthy of being called a championship match with two men who are championship caliber, res- caliber wrestlers. Because Jinder Mahal ain't any of that. Jinder Mahal ain't any of that, and he will never be any of that. You know, I find it really odd. This is the last thing I'm going to say about this. Look at 3MB. Look at everybody in 3MB. Heath Slater was a former tag team champion, right? That's the uh, ceiling for Mr. Uh, Heath Slater. 3MB. Heath Slater wins the tag team championships with Rhino. He ain't going further than that. We got Jinder Mahal, right? Fired by the WWE before he looked like uh, the T-Virus. Fired by the WWE. Now he's the WWE champion. WWE, before they fired Mahal, they fired Drew McIntyre. They fired Drew McIntyre. Now, I want you guys to watch Drew McIntyre when he's in the ring. I want you guys to look at Drew McIntyre. I want you guys to look at what he looks like. You take these two guys who were both fired from the WWE, who were brought back to the WWE... You take a look at these guys side by side. You take a look at these guys side by side, not only in physique, but in the ring. Who are you going to make the WWE champion out of those two guys? The answer is simple. How WWE can even fathom having Drew McIntyre be fired first, number one, over Jinder Mahal, and number two, have him down in NXT and not be the WWE champion, while Jinder Mahal is holding the WWE championship, I feel like we're living in an alternate universe. I feel like I'm living in Jerry Seinfeld's bizarro world. You know the bizarro world where WWE spits verbiage to their announcers? Well, 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 I don't understand the WWE audience. They're booing the fans, they're booing the wrestlers that they're supposed to be cheering, and they're cheering the guys that they're supposed to be booing. Bizarro world! Bailey is booed. Bizarro world. Roman Reigns is hated legitimately. Nobody wants to see him. It's bizarro world. No, we don't want to see him. Drew McIntyre is your NXT champion and Jinder Mahal is your WWE champion. Do you find anything wrong with that statement? I do. The guy is awful. Get him off television. There's a reason why he's on a t-shirt. I don't put people on t-shirts simply because I hate them. I put them on t-shirts with that hashtag because they don't have any business being in the position that they're in. And Get Off My TV has a 99% success rate. Hopefully gender follows suit. Like Ryback... And everybody else that's been get off my TV. JBL. Give me a break. Eva Marie. Jinder Mahal needs to be stripped of the WWE Championship. ASAP. Because if this is what you got going on with this guy, if this is any sense of what we're going to see in the future with this guy, I fear for SmackDown Live. I fear for Nakamura. This is how they've booked him since April. Look at how he has been booked. You mean to tell me you call this guy from NXT up, you call this guy up from NXT and this is the best you got? Somebody doesn't know what the hell they are doing. Moving on here. We got news on Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam comments on a potential WWE return. 
Do I want to see Rob Van Dam return to the WWE? Probably not. I didn't want to see him return the first time. Why would I want to see him return a second time? Rob Van Dam is old. Rob Van Dam is not the Rob Van Dam that we are accustomed to seeing. Rob Van Dam probably has lost a good five or six steps from what we know of Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam was recently interviewed by Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated. This was to advertise his appearance at Booker T's charity event in, on Sunday in Hollywood. This event will be for the victims of Hurricane Harvey. During the interview, Van Dam spoke on a potential return to the WWE. He hasn't been seen on WWE television since he left the company in 2014. He remains active on the independent scene. Van Dam gave his thoughts on a potential return to the company, and I quote, I'm looking at 24 matches, all international, booked over the next 12 months. I don't have any plans to share, but there is always a possibility of a return. I've talked to WWE recently, but it's about the new video games that are coming out. That was more of a business talk about that. But when the business is right and it's the right time to go back, that, of course, then it's always a possibility. End quote. So there you go. Rob Van Dam, right now, he is booked over the next 12 months. 24 matches in total. So Rob Van Dam, at least for all of 2018, will not be in the WWE. If we see Rob Van Dam come back to the WWE, they will more than likely... Uh, have him do a one-off or a special appearance, a cameo in the Royal Rumble because that's always the perfect ground for a return like that. So I could see that happening in maybe 2018. It's never out of the question for a one-off, you know. But if he wants another full-fledged return, the later it gets, the older he gets, the more I don't want to see Rob Van Dam back in the WWE. No Mercy's got a kickoff match. I'm sure you guys are itching to find out what it is. I'm sure you guys are super excited to watch the kickoff show for No Mercy. No Mercy takes place on Sunday. We will be reviewing it on the channel right here after the pay-per-view goes off the air. The event will be headlined by two WrestleMania caliber matches. Lesnar and Strowman for the Universal title. And Roman Reigns versus John Cena in a... Co a colossal in character of two top dogs in WWE. I don't know how to or how WWE is uh, penning this match or describing this match, but it's two top dogs fighting over WWE's estate. So we did the preview predictions yesterday on Off the Script. If you guys missed that, go and check it out. But Elias, who wants to walk with Elias? I do. Elias is directionless on Monday Night Raw, as always, with everybody that I enjoy watching on Monday Night Raw. They seemingly have no direction. Elias will take on... Top chef in Titus Catering, Apollo Crews. So that is the No Mercy kickoff. Elias versus Apollo Crews. I can't wait to watch that match, man. I am dripping with anticipation to see Elias and Apollo Crews at No Mercy. Do you care? No, I'm sure you don't care. In fact, I'm not even watching the kickoff show. My show starts at 8 p.m. Because all the kickoff show is is matches like this. Sad that Elias has nothing to do on Monday Night Raw. He's got segments on TV every week, but he seemingly has no direction. But then again, when Jason Jordan uh, is your new Intercontinental Champion, right? When he wins the IC title, which I have a sneaking suspicion WWE's going to do, even though I don't want it, you know? I think Elias should be cast for that role. If Jason Jordan is the babyface, uh, I think a perfect man to lose that to is Elias Sampson. But I would have made Jeff Hardy or Finn Balor or a guy like that the Intercontinental Champion because as of right now, Brock Lesnar is going to be off television, which we discussed on Part 1 for four months. The Intercontinental Championship is going to have to be around the shoulder of someone of vast importance. Jason Jordan is not someone of vast importance. He's got zero charisma. He's got zero charisma. Uh, I think the wall that I'm looking at in my bedroom has more charisma than Jason Jordan. Seriously. You know? I was listening to Justin LaBar's podcast on Wednesday, too. He also made mention of Jason Jordan's singlet and his ring attire. I completely agree. He looks like a, he looks like a bum. Get him some new ring gear. I completely agree 100%. Does he look like a champion? No. Does he wrestle like one? Yeah. But does he look one? Look like one? Does he sound like one? Does he come off as one? No, no, and no. So if that warrants a WWE championship title run with the IC title for Jason Jordan according to some of these goons, then uh, good thing they're not booking WWE. 
Elias and Apollo Crews will kick off No Mercy. Who cares? There you go. That's your kickoff match. If I don't review it on the show on Sunday night, you know why. Charlotte apparently clarifies in her new book called Second Nature. You guys can get the audio version of Second Nature via Audible. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. If you guys want Charlotte's audiobook, plus you're going to get that book for free. If you sign up using our link, AudibleTrial.com slash off the script, you're going to get that for free. You got one free book. You can make that your free book, but you're also going to get 30 days free to look at Audible service for the entire month. Can't beat that, man. So if you guys want to check out Charlotte's audiobook, it is on Audible. You can use our link, AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. Charlotte clarifies. In her new book, Second Nature, that Sasha Banks was angry when she won the Divas title. Charlotte was recently a guest on 107.7 The Bones, Baby Huey and Bimbo Jimbo show. Who listens to syndicated radio? Honestly. The Bone... The only bone that I know of is the one in my pants. And your mother ate it right up, bro. As long as Charlotte doesn't touch it. T- touch it. I don't want nothing to do with Charlotte. This was in order to promote her new book, Second Nature, The Legacy of Ric Flair and the Rise of Charlotte. Now, I know Charlotte may be some guy's cup of tea, but to me, no. No way, bro. I'll pass. I'll pass, and I won't even give a second look. One of the more interesting parts of the book is where Charlotte talks about her relationship with Sasha Banks. Charlotte wrote that Sasha may have been angry with her, that she was the one who won the Divas title from Nikki Bella instead of her. Why would Sasha be upset about winning the Divas title? Who cares? You want to be known as the last Divas champion? You are everything that is not a Divas champion, so don't worry about it, honey. Good thing you didn't win it. But that title turned into the women's championship, so whatever. But you don't want to be known as the last woman to hold the Divas title. That butterfly belt? Come on, Sasha. You you could do better than that, honey. She also spoke about them having a bit of a falling out during their time together in NXT. These comments are from the book and have gotten a lot of attention from fans. Seems like they have been blown a bit out of proportion, as always, with something on the internet. With some fans saying that they hate one another. They don't hate one another. Why would Charlotte and Sasha Banks hate one another? When they're part of something that could be special that WWE is ruining right now. But why would they hate one another? They obviously don't hate one another. There's no reason for them to hate one another. There's no chance that they could hate one another. Look at what they did when they had that string of just an entire year of battling back and forth for the Women's Championship. Why would they hate one another? They were the entire division. There's no reason for them to hate one another. Now, Charlotte came out on top, yes. But Sasha shared the spotlight with Charlotte. And now, if you look at them, they're right back to square one. There's not one that's better than the other. It's all about Alexa Bliss now. And then it's going to be about Asuka. So Charlotte and Sasha Banks have seemingly taken a back seat. So there's no reason for them to hate one another. This is what she said in the book, and I quote, Not being as popular as Sasha at the time, she's one of the greatest performers today. Doesn't really sound like someone who hates Sasha Banks. She will go down as one of the greatest female wrestlers of all time. I don't want to say that necessarily that Sasha was mad, but Sasha is that competitive. That's why she brings out the best in me, and I bring out the best in her. It's because she wants to be the best, and I want to be the best. At that time, if I was to put myself in Sasha's shoes, she had just come off Brooklyn against Bayley, one of the greatest matches. She probably, in her mind, thought, why isn't the title going to me? I can't blame her for that. I just think it was hard for me knowing that I wish people could be more understanding that I needed the title to make me, and she didn't. End quote. So there you go. You know, I could understand where Sasha was probably coming from. I could understand Charlotte's interpretation of that. But I could also say that Charlotte really didn't need the title either because of who she was and what her lineage is, you know? Sasha probably needed it more so just to establish her out of the gate 
because Charlotte already had an established name. And if correct me, and correct me if I'm wrong, she was working with her father, and Ric Flair was in her corner night in and night out. So Sasha, to me, probably needed it more so than Charlotte did, just based on who Charlotte was. Sasha came off one of the greatest women's matches in modern wrestling history with Bailey. Uh, a Bailey that I fondly miss. A Bailey that's not the same Bailey we're getting now. Don't know where she went. Maybe she went to Candyland. I don't know. You know? Maybe she uh, floated over the rainbow somewhere and got lost looking for the pot of gold. Maybe she got lost in the clouds looking for Sunshine Bear of the Care Bears. I don't know where Bailey went. She ain't the same. She don't deserve a title match, I'll tell you that. It's the reason why she's on a t-shirt too. She's ex WWE creative. How do you mess that up? How do you mess that up? How do you take that Bailey that won that match in Brooklyn and mess that up? You have to really be shitty at your job. Either that or you just don't care. Someone backstage honestly hates women's wrestling. That's the only thing I can determine. Sasha, to me, needed more than Charlotte. You know? That entire feud between them two. Nothing but forced revolutionary garbage down WWE's throat. Or they've tried to force that down our throat. You know? Oh, first time this. Multi-time that, you know? Hell in a Cell, Submission Match, Iron Woman's Match, all this, all this nonsense. All this nonsense. What happened? You know? Sasha, to me, needed it. That's another one. WWE, really derailing Sasha Banks' momentum. You got a legit superstar, one of the most popular superstars. I'm not even talking about the women. One of the most popular superstars you have on that roster. And you just embarrass her. You derail her. How do you have a woman in Sasha Banks be a four-time women's champion and not hold it for more than three weeks? Are you mental? Are you mental? Sasha Banks has been the best female performer coming out of WrestleMania. If she's been the best, why hasn't she been given a run with the title? As far as I see it, Alexa has gotten stale. Not taking anything away from Alexa, she's gotten better. But when Alexa was on SmackDown Live and coming up, and we've seen her vocal promo ability, that's the Alexa that I, you know what? She could do good. But WWE, for whatever reason, Alexa's been the flavor of the month ever since she came over from SmackDown Live. But the way I see it, you got to reward the best. Sasha's been the best, and there's nobody that's been close to what Sasha's been doing. So why hasn't that been rewarded with the championship title reign? Same, with, same thing with the Usos. Usos are the best tag team in WWE, period. Why are they not the tag team champions? You know, WWE is so high on getting the New Day to have all these reigns and title wins and all this other shit, right? Charlotte probably going to have more title wins than her father by the end of this thing. If that's what you're going for, that's ridiculous. Just like how Charlotte now is going to fight Natalia at Hell in a Cell. Why is Charlotte coming back and winning a Fatal 4-Way to get a title shot just like that? All you got to do is win a Fatal 4-Way and bloop, you got a title match. And I know why they're doing it. I know why they're giving Charlotte a title match and eventually a title win. I don't see Natalia holding that title. You know? Well, you know, I don't know what they're doing with Carmella. I don't know what they're doing with Carmella. I could see maybe Carmella cashing in on Natalia and then Charlotte taking the title of Carmella. You know? But I know why they're putting Charlotte in a title match right away. A, the book. B, they're trying to build sympathy off her because she's the daughter of Ric Flair and Ric Flair had a near-death experience. That's the reason why you're giving his daughter a title shot at the next pay-per-view. Shame on you. Charlotte's better than that. And I, I, I'm sure the writers can do better than that as well. That's just a lame cop-out, if you ask me. You know? And, and that's exactly why they're doing it. Don't believe anybody else. The reason why Charlotte's getting a title match is because WWE wants to throw the sympathy bone at Charlotte. They want you to develop sympathy for the, for the baby-faced Charlotte because her daddy is Ric Flair. Give me a break. 
I love Ric Flair just like the rest of everybody else. But that th does that deem Charlotte title match worthy because of her being off television since SummerSlam and now all of a sudden you got to put her in a title match because her father was in the hospital? Come on. So stupid, man. This is the shit that I hate reporting. But I got to say it because nobody else is going to say it. Nobody else is going to say it. Paige. Let's keep it with the women. Paige coming back to the WWE. When and where? A few days ago on Off The Script Extra. If you guys missed it, link is in the video. Paige posted a video, or a photo rather, at the Performance Center with the title, Went to see an old friend today. Good to be back here. Hashtag road back to my house. Back to my house? I don't think so. I know, I wish, I know you wish it was your house, but Paige is coming back to the WWE. This was indicating that Paige is close to returning to WWE television after being away for over a year following neck surgery. Here are some more details on Paige's returns and plans for her WWE return. In WWE's article about Paige training, it was mentioned that the women of Raw and SmackDown Live need to be on notice. Paige was selected by Raw in the 2016 draft, but hasn't appeared due to injury. Now, the article is promoting Paige as a free agent. And this doesn't necessarily mean that she's going back to Raw when she comes back. Now, according to Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter, looks like Paige has gotten full clearance to come back to the ring and is just getting back into ring shape. That is exactly what she's training for, to get back into ring shape. But she is cleared. Meltzer says that there is talk about a storyline in place for Paige when she returns, probably with Emma. I'm assuming over this who started the women's revolution deal. That's the only thing I could think of. Um, but, nix that. That's what i do if she went to Raw. Meltzer says the plan right now is for her return to SmackDown Live. If this happens, it looks like the SmackDown's women's division is getting a boost in the very near future. The exact date of Paige's return is unknown, but it looks like things are on the right track for her to come back to the WWE, and it will be with SmackDown Live. Paige and Charlotte, sign me up, man. Sign me up. Charlotte, being the women's champion, I think that will happen going into WrestleMania. I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, but as far as Paige, we need to see the page that is the anti-diva page. We need to see the page that came out uh, when she beat AJ Lee for the women's championship or the divas championship on her first night on Monday Night Raw. That's the page we need to see. If that's the page we don't get, then I really don't care. You know, because Paige, when she uh, was on WWE, you know, before she got hurt, she was uncharismatic, she lost interest, and you could see it written all over her face and in her body language. The one way I could tell is when she did that primal scream, when she gets on the ring apron and does that Xena-like uh, yell or scream, whatever she does, she put absolutely no emphasis or no energy into any of those screams before her, before her match, during her ring, ring entrance. It was just, I don't want to be here. So hopefully Paige gets back and she wants to be back. You know, the women's division is vastly different now than when she was on Monday Night Raw in 2016 before the draft. You know, things are, you know, a little bit better. Not by much, but they're a little bit better. So hopefully Paige embraces this and offers us an alternative and does whatever she can to really make it must-see on SmackDown Live. Embrace the change, embrace this new women's division, and be the standout that I know you could be. That's all I want. And you know what? Pretend like you care. I don't want to see you come to the arenas and in the ring and wrestling and do your entrance, and I don't want to feel like I'm watching someone who's just there to collect a paycheck. I want to see somebody who genuinely wants to compete and entertain the fans, because Paige did not do that. For whatever reason, she did not do that after the draft. So we'll see what happens with Paige. According to Meltzer, she's coming back to SmackDown Live. Why is WWE bringing back Starcade? I asked the same thing. But WWE announced it would bring back the Starcade event for one night only. And a lot of people had opinions on the situation, whether they were upset like Brandy and Cody Rhodes, or just they wanted to be part of the event for several different reasons. 
Several different people commented on this news. The subject was actually brought up on a recent episode of Dinner with the King on Jerry the King Lawler's podcast. Jerry Lawler thought that WWE was bringing back Starcade uh, for one night only to counter Wrestlecade just under 30 minutes away from where Starcade is being held. Well, of course, it's a good promotional idea. Anytime you can increase ticket sales, you're doing a good job, replied Lawler. Very politically correct answer by Jerry the King Lawler, by the way. Brian Alvarez also mentioned on Wrestling Observer Live how WWE very well might have chosen that specific date to character the WrestleCade event as well. As Starcade gets closer, it might bring even more attention by adding some exciting matches to the card. It might make it hard to resist and create pretty strong competition for the events surrounding WrestleCade. Uh, hopefully WWE turns this into a network special. I hope so. Um, WWE should really make this a pay-per-view. I don't know why this is a house show. You know, I don't, I, I talked about this already. I don't see how branding a house show as Starcade is going to make it any different than what we see on a Monday Night Raw. I, I don't. So WWE, you know, if you're not showing this on the network, why would I care? And why would you end up bringing it back anyway, just to make a house show feel special? Non-advertised or non-televised house show. So this better be on the network. I'm assuming this is going to be on the network. Because you're not going to be booking Goldust and Cody. That's what they want. I don't know if Cody's going to agree to that. I don't know if Cody is contractually obligated to do whatever he wants like that. But if they do book the Rhodes Brothers versus the Hardys for that mat, for that show, on top of having Jinder and Shinsuke Nakamura inside a, inside a steel cage, and then Charlotte versus Natty inside a steel cage, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, New Day versus the Usos for the tag team titles, you know? Styles versus uh, Corbin and Ziggler, I think, in a triple threat, uh, not Ziggler, uh, Dillinger in a triple threat match for the United States Championship. If that stuff is not being televised, you're making a mistake. You're making a mistake. So hopefully WWE televises that on the network and we can all have some fun with that. But if WWE wanted to brand this as a pay-per-view, I think that would be the better decision here. Like I said, there's one thing that WWE needs to do. One of their glaring problems is their pay-per-view calendar. There's either too much of them, too many of them, or these gimmick pay-per-views are just lame and need to go away. TLC, Money in the Bank, Hell in a Cell need to go away. You know, King of the Ring needs to come back. I would love to see a Halloween Havoc. I'd love to see a Fall Brawl or a War Games, Bash at the Beach, something like that. Something that we can really sink our teeth into instead of these gimmick pay-per-views. You know, Hell in a Cell. I, I mentioned this before. You know, Hell in a Cell needs to go away for a little bit. Because when a Hell in a Cell announcement is made, and we don't see that match for about three or four years, and that announcement is made, it's like, holy shit, we're getting a Hell in a Cell match. Something diabolical is going to happen. But the fact that we're now programmed to see Hell in a Cell every single year and, and have it occur with feuds that don't even have any business being inside Hell in a Cell, that's an issue to me. That's an issue to me, you know? So Starcade would really fit well on the WWE calendar if they wanted it to. Branding it as a house show just to sell extra tickets? Absolutely pointless to me. But WWE and Jerry the King Lawler giving you the political answer, well, they're just trying to counter WrestleCade. Who cares? Who, who cares about WrestleCade? WWE's worried about WrestleCade? Why? And it's just odd how Starcade is taking place one week after Survivor Series. You know? It's just really odd to me. It's on the network. We're going to get Survivor Series, and then one week later, we're going to get Starcade. WWE doesn't know what they're doing. They just need more content for the network. That's all that is. Finally, guys, we're going to end with this because I won't have enough news for tomorrow. Ronda Rousey. Seemingly like we talk about Ronda Rousey every single week on this show. But there is now backstage talk on Ronda Rousey's first singles opponent. Ooh, I wonder who it could be. There are multiple ideas being discussed right now for the four horsewomen of MMA and WWE for storylines. Dave Meltzer is reporting that one of the things being talked about right now, as of this week, is Charlotte and Becky Lynch right now are on SmackDown Live. Bailey and Sasha are on Monday Night Raw. Now, a 4v4 match can take place at Survivor Series since it's a co-branded show. But it will be interesting to see how they do the build-up for that match. Although the feeling was that Ronda Rousey's first match would have been with Stephanie McMahon. 
Thank God it's not. Otherwise, I would have vomited. The talk now is that they will do Rousey versus Flair. One-on-one. -on -one. A couple of years ago, Ric Flair was interviewed here on uh, certain websites on the interwebs. And he pushed the idea of doing Charlotte versus Rousey at WrestleMania. So it looks like we are closer to seeing that match than ever before. Um, I would not even book the match, to be honest with you. I wouldn't book that match. I'd do the four horsewomen versus four horsewomen and just call it a day. Uh, in fact, I would do a superstar shakeup and I would move Sasha and Bailey over to SmackDown Live and I would move Charlotte and maybe Becky over to Monday Night Raw and maybe you call up a few other women from NXT. You got Paige on SmackDown. You call it maybe Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, maybe an Ember Moon, and you kind of replenish the women's division. I would have Charlotte on the same brand as Asuka, and I would book Asuka versus Charlotte at WrestleMania. Who the fuck wants to see Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte at WrestleMania? Really? You mean to tell me you would rather see Ronda Rousey and Charlotte over Asuka and Charlotte with Asuka's undefeated streak on the line and as women's champion? I know which one I'm taking. Who cares about this match? The reason why Rousey is training is for the Four Horsemen match at Survivor Series. Leave it at that. Leave it at that. I would much rather see Asuka and Charlotte at WrestleMania. Especially if Asuka is undefeated. Which I hope. Which I hope. Knowing WWE, they'll have her job to Dana Brooke on week three. That's off the script. Thank you guys so much for everything this Saturday. If you enjoyed the video... Hit that thumbs up. Hopefully it stays monetized this time because I made zero dimes off yesterday's video. Anyway, I'm JD. Hit that thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below with that bell for your notifications. ProWrestlingCrate.com slash off the script uh, or just ProWrestlingCrate.com coupon code off the script. If you guys enjoyed what you've seen today in the unboxing, remember that WrestlingClub.com as well. Code over there is JD from NY. And make sure you guys follow me all over social media. And if you guys want to support, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. I'll see you guys on Sunday morning with more of this weekend's Off the Script. And no mercy this Sunday, tomorrow night, review on the channel as soon as the show goes off the air. But I'm JD. Enjoy your Saturdays. And I will see you guys right back here tomorrow for more Off the Script. I'll talk to you later.